There was an uneasy feeling. You're chasing something, but you don't know what it is. That's Grace. She's dead. That's when everything started to get crazy. Ah! Why can't you just leave us alone? I was so scared. Ah! <laughs> you are about to watch is based on true events. Some details have been altered to protect confidentiality. My name is Laura Ketchledge and I work the night shift. I was heading off to nursing school in the fall and my mother thought it would be a really good idea to get some practice and helping an elderly couple that she knew through family connections. That summer, Laura takes a job as a live-in caregiver, 400 miles from home. I was a teenager. I've never really gone to somebody's home and lived with them, especially a home like that. This was a home that this family had lived in for 75 years. Hello? Well, when I first came into the house, there was an uneasy feeling. It just kind of felt a little bit like an intruder, like I was out of place. Oh, that's Grace. She's dead. That feeling returned as I was walking up the stairs. Carol introduces Lura to her husband. Charles, this is the new girl. Uh, Lura, it's very nice to meet you. Lura, it's nice to meet you, sir. Welcome. Charles was just, just sweet and genuine. My job is to stay up all night, buy his bed, turn him, give him medication, get him up to use the lavatory if needed, and to really make sure everything was okay. Stay alert, Laura. Carol was more reserved, and she had a worry, and she just wasn't straightforward with me. I suspected that there was an, a deeper story to this home. My official hours really started at midnight, but before that, I would help uh, make dinner. One night, I had uh, borrowed an apron out of the pantry. I had to give it a good tug to open it up. I was very careful afterwards to close the pantry door. Laura is sure it's locked. And I put on the apron and made dinner. Later that night, after I put Charles to bed and Carol went to sleep, I went back into the kitchen to tidy up. When I walked in the kitchen and found the pantry door wide open, I was very shocked it was open. It made no sense the door was open. Not for one minute did I second guess myself because I clearly closed that door. I had a knot in my stomach. And then I heard footsteps and felt the presence. Right behind me. Nobody was there. 
something was really, really going on in this house, and I felt terrible about it. For the next couple of weeks, I was getting into my routine. The trump card wins the trick. Okay. Okay, got that? I think I got it. Carol and her husband were determined to teach me how to play bridge. We even had an imaginary player. Thank you, Grace. You need four players for the game. But only three players are among the living. I put the cards back in the tray. Later that night, around 4 a.m., I noticed something in the living room. I was taken back because all of the cards were out of the tray and scattered all over the room. Carol and Charles had gone to bed, and I had been in the living room earlier, and those cards were still in the tray. There was no logical reason that those cards were out of the tray. As she tidies up, Laura feels something is watching her every move. I just felt sick to my stomach, and I got a wave of nausea. I felt cold and clammy at the same time. Since this presence, it ran a chill down my spine. What she sees next haunts her to this day. I was so scared. <laughs> it's a few nights in as a live-in caretaker for an elderly man when Lura discovers something not of this world is watching her every move. I felt a presence in the home. And then she just faded into nothing. I was so scared. I never moved so quickly in my life. What did you think was happening? I never really thought about the paranormal before I started this job, but there was something wrong with this home. I, it was haunted. As far as Laura's concerned, the incident with the pantry door, the incident with the cards on the floor, the little things that started to happen were ramping up. Things aren't necessarily copacetic as far as the spiritual world goes. Despite her fear, Laura keeps quiet. I felt bottled up inside. I, I didn't know what to say, and I didn't want to alarm these two elderly people. I was there to help them, not, not scare them. What do you do next? I just was very vigilant, because I didn't know what next was going to happen. With eyes wide open, Laura vows to do her job, stay alert, and protect Charles. It was around 3 a.m., and I was reading a book seated next to Charles. The electrical outlets flickered, like some sort of a bizarre power surge. And when I looked at the doorway, there was this globe or, or ball of light. When it entered the room, you could feel it. It was like another person entering the room. It was powerful. I wanted to yell or scream, but nothing came out. It was like my voice was stolen or swept away. It was 
the most unworldly feeling that I've ever had. <gasps> Did you know what that was? I think it was this uh, orb or soul. It's not unusual to have a haunted object that can reside in a place and then see the apparition of, of the spirit that's attached itself to the object. <laughs> I was terrified. <laughs> that was one of the events of my life that has unnerved me the most. <laughs> Carol came into the kitchen and she looked at me. Miss Grace doesn't like you wearing that apron. I learned right then that this was Grace's apron and she was Charles's first wife. Charles had been happily married to his first wife for years and she passed away, unfortunately, after a long protracted illness. She died in the home. Grace's spirit still lives in this house. And Carol believes Grace never left. I practically ripped the apron off and stuffed it back in the pantry closet, and that's where it stayed. We're very unaware that we can trigger bigger paranormal events. When Laura takes that apron, it's a sign that she's moved in on the territory that she really shouldn't be, and that is the husband. And that really upsets the spirit. After Carol told me about Grace, Everything was clicking together. The cards, they were monogrammed with Grace's initials. Those were her playing cards. That was Grace that opened the pantry door. That was Grace's soul that entered the room. It became clear to me that Grace didn't want me touching her things. Laura is maybe looked at as a rival. She's looked at as someone from the outside who really doesn't have a place there. It doesn't fit the dynamic that it should. Why not leave now? I really felt, you know, conflicted in my heart. I wanted to be there for this couple and finish the job. And plus, I really needed the money. But I was also very scared. I hope you decide to stay. Charles needs someone. She sort of talked me into staying, at least for a little while longer. Later that night, I had to uh, go down to the basement to do the laundry. And I was holding the handrail with one hand and all the laundry with the next. As I was going down, I felt a cold hand grip my right shoulder. been holding the railing, I could have broken my neck. Laura is dead sure about who and what is attacking her. <laughs> that was Charles's dead wife. It was a terrible experience. It was, it was so scary. I think at the point where Laura is pushed down the stairs by Grace, that's the, that's the be all end all. When physical attacks happen, there's no going back. The violence pushes Laura to the brink. She cannot stay in the house. Charles, I have to go, I can't. <laughs> Wherever Laura goes, Grace, is never far behind. The first wife was just laying next to him on top of the covers.
Then she looked at me. It was the look like I was intruding. She didn't want me there. Her eyes said to me, leave. I just wanted to get the hell out of this house. I was done. Charles died peacefully at home about a week after I left. And I don't think he was alone. I think Grace was with him. I think Grace was just waiting for him to pass over to be reunited. Because of what I've been through, I believe now. My name's Megan, and I work the night shift. I am a bartender and server. Before I got the job, I was walking by and noticed they were doing renovations. This building that it used to be an old firehouse, it's been converted into a restaurant. I decided to just walk in and introduce myself and um, within the hour I had a job. My job is to set up the restaurant, serve guests, and then once they all go home, I clean up and close shop. Just a few nights on the job, Megan gets a warning. Excuse me, have you seen him yet? One of my first customers said, have you seen the chief? He will. I was just too busy doing my job to really take it seriously. It was just idle conversation at the time. Megan has no time for idle conversation. I would have to close the building, staying there later after the other employees. I got this. You go home and get some sleep. Thanks. So I was there alone at night. I found that at night, it was not uncommon to hear footsteps when nobody was there. Then it goes beyond that. It's the feeling like someone is behind you, and when you turn around, they're not there. It's all in your head, Megan. Working alone, night after night, starts to take a toll on Megan. It's just every night, it's little things. I want to play them off. All she wants is a calm, quiet shift. But that's not on the menu. You want to ignore it and you want to pretend that it's not happening. But then it's just more and more, and eventually you just start to feel on edge every night when you're closing. Every noise that you hear behind you, you jump. About a week later on, it just escalated. I was mopping at the end of the night. I kept having this nagging feeling that someone was there. Megan leaves the floor to dry, but moments later. And when I came back, I noticed instead of just streaks, there were these footprints and you could see the outline and they just started in the middle of the room and just did this weird walk in a circle. You couldn't see it enter the room or leave. They started in the middle. 
I honestly just start to think, am I crazy? Even after all that, you stayed. Every part of me wanted to just run out of the building, but at the end of the day, I still have a job I have to do. Megan's uneasiness grows. But eventually, you can't ignore that building sensation and the feeling of eyes on your back or the hair on your arm standing up. And you can just feel it start to manifest itself. I thought I saw something out of the corner of my eye. I could just hear this rattling. And as I looked over, I saw a wine glass on the shelf started to shake. <laughs> it just smashed everywhere. I was scared. There's no way it could have just slid off on its own. It wasn't on the edge. It would have had to have been physically grabbed and then thrown. But there was nobody else in there. I'd have to really just try and tell myself to calm down. And that's when I realized I wasn't alone. But then you blink and there's nothing there. But something is there. I heard right next to my ear. Megan. It was enough that you could feel it. There's nothing to be seen. That moment, I realized that I was being targeted. While closing the bar alone at night, Megan is being served. Some serious scares. I heard right next to my ear. I felt something next to me. Whatever was there saw me, and it wanted me to see it. Leave me alone. I am. All of a sudden, there's nobody. How did you feel? I just felt so nervous. And then all of a sudden, just instantly felt cold. Megan fears the rumors about the chief weren't for a chit chat after all. That was the first moment that I really felt panic. I, I booked it out of there. It seems to me like this spirit potentially could be harmful. If a spirit gets to the point where it can physically interact with you, then that's at a dangerous level because you don't know exactly how powerful it can get. Why don't you quit right then and there? I was in college and I needed some money. It's time to tell her boss about what's been happening to her. Let me show you something. He confirms Megan's suspicions about who is tormenting her. Find them all in the library. It was very tragic. The ghost from the old fire hall. He died on the job. The chief. He burned to death. It was a terrible story. He died in a fire just down the road. I was scared of what the next step was going to be. You know, why did it want me so bad? Is the chief dangerous? 
He seems angry. As we were talking, we could just feel that energy building in the air. Just the little pinpricks and the coolness coming in. And all of a sudden, it felt like something was behind me. Something pushed me forward. After I was pushed, the pop gun came out of its handle. Why can't you just leave us alone? At that point, I'm not having it anymore. I'm out of here. That's enough. When a spirit is able to get enough energy that it's able to physically interact with the living, um, that means it's at a level where you don't know how much more physical it's gonna get with you. So in this case, I don't think Megan is that safe. After that, I really contemplated not coming back. Megan finds the courage to return to work after an unexpected request. Out of the blue, a local ghost hunter came and asked if they could do an investigation. I wanted to be there because I wanted answers and I wanted to see what they found. Is there a spirit present here? I was just frozen at that point. Just, just absolutely shocked that there was such an instantaneous reaction to the question. If you're the chief in the photo, could you turn the light on? <laughs> the light instantly just clicked on. Could you turn the light off? <laughs> That's when everything started to get crazy. We started to feel our hair getting pulled and just coldness everywhere. The whole room started to feel electric. I've seen enough horror movies. I know that nothing good is coming after this. I was out of here. When somebody dies unexpectedly in a very tragic way, it leaves behind a lot of traumatic energy, and that energy lingers in a location. I absolutely love this job. After these events, we've changed some things. We no longer close alone at the building. There's always a buddy system. I at least have some backup. We just do our best to do what we have to do to keep doing our job. My name is Gerald, and I work the night shift. Twenty-eight-year-old Gerald works as a custodian at a high school that's been shut down for almost a year. I do like the night shift. Don't have to deal with too much traffic, don't have to deal with the public. The main building of the school is very old. We do security checking the exterior doors and making sure that nobody can access the interior. It's a little eerie to just be around the building itself, but it's not too scary, it's eerie. Gerald continues his duties inside the school. It's clean hallways, maintain and fix up the classrooms. 
classrooms that have been blocked off. Classrooms that are rumored to be haunted. My name's Kate and I'm Gerald's wife. I do worry because he works the night shift all the time and it is a late shift. You never know what could happen. Did you believe the rumors of the school being haunted? I do, I believe in the paranormal and the spirits. I did not believe in the paranormal. But the next night changes everything. I had just started working at the school. Call comes over the radio. We got an issue outside the gym here. There's water just outside of the gymnasium. I'll go get another mop. Maybe it's a busted pipe. Maybe rain is coming from the roof, but it wasn't raining that night. So I started mopping it up. And it gets stranger. I noticed that there was scratches in the wax on the floor. What was odd is we had just worked on those exact same scratches the night before. Then suddenly, the lights above him start to fail. Hey, I'm going to need a ladder and an extra couple of light bulbs. Hello, are you there? Gerald for Allen. Relax, man. It was weird. By the time my colleague came back, the lights were back on. Do not sneak up on me like that. Look. I thought we took care of this already. Yeah, that's what I thought, too. I'm wondering, OK, what's going on? But there's no explanation. So we mopped it up, and we went on our way. The partners head out for a perimeter patrol. Most of our crew members were off. This night, there was nobody out but us two. Whew, I am freezing. Instead of going around, let's take the tunnel. Come on, faster. There's a tunnel connecting the main building to the farthest outbuilding, just in case of these storms or rainy days. As soon as they enter the tunnel, the energy changes. It, it's a little eerie. It's it's frightening. And now. Gerald's co-worker is frozen. Hey, buddy, you OK? He wasn't hearing me. It was almost like there was something blocking my voice. Hey! So I, I got louder. Hey! Hey! And he's still giving me that blank stare. Hey, you OK? Hey. Yo, you OK? Why can't he hear me? And then I saw eyes beating on me. As I'm telling a story, I'm getting goosebumps, chills up and down my spine. Did you see that? Y yeah. Yeah, I saw that. He finally acknowledged me talking to him. I think it went this way. Come on. Are you crazy? Let's go. We ran towards it. But Why it was. Why did you run towards it? Well, because there's not supposed to be anybody in the building. And that's due diligence, is to make sure that there's nobody left in the building. It's frightening because you don't know if someone's hiding behind a corner or what's going to happen. It's 
the, the worst feeling that you're chasing something, but you still don't know what it is or who it is. My colleague and I scoured the tunnel top to bottom. There was nothing in the tunnel. I'm out. I'm done. What do you mean you're out? What are you talking about? You be careful, Gerald. It definitely scared my colleague. He decided to pack it up and leave. I was annoyed and I slammed the tunnel door shut. And now something from that point after I slammed the door shut was pushing me. Something was there. In a closed down high school, Gerald, the night caretaker, finds reappearing scratch marks a disappearing intruder. And now, he's being violently attacked. The more I try to walk to the right, it's more forcing me to the left. I couldn't move. I was scared. Something's pushing me against the wall, and like, I don't want to face it. I had to move. Because if he's able to force me against the wall, then he's able to do more. Gerald tries to escape, but is no match for this otherworldly force. At this point, I'm not calling out for help or anything because nobody's around to really hear me. I am trying to find any explanation not to panic because I'm in the school by myself. Gerald is face to face with the entity, and then it disappears. I'm free. Kate. Gerald? Oh, I gotta listen. I gotta tell you something. I was at home with the kids, and he had actually called me and told me, like, you'll never believe what just happened. Something grabbed me. What was it? I don't know. Hearing the panic in his voice put a panic in me, like, oh my god, like, what's going on? And as he's telling me, I'm just getting complete chills through my whole body. I definitely believed him immediately. Gerald has no doubt that the school is haunted. There's no other explanation. At that point in time, I can honestly say I was scared. Gerald is experiencing what I think is a very territorial spirit. The living should be wary of angry spirits. They can harm us in several ways. Sometimes physically, sometimes mentally, sometimes emotionally, and sometimes spiritually. As his shift comes to an end, Gerald confronts the morning caretaker to find out more about who or what is in the building. I said, hey, we saw something. And he said, okay, well, what'd you see? I described him to a tia. And he goes, there was a custodian that hung himself, took his life in the gym. Killed himself and over here. He worked at the farthest out building and he would always use the tunnel. At that moment, I got the worst chills over my body. Now everything made sense. I now fully believe that I seen the spirit of the custodian that hung himself. There's definitely a paranormal spirit going around that school. I do worry because he's already seen him once that there's a possibility they might see him again. I think it's entirely possible in this case that the janitor's spirit was trying to establish dominance. This is my school, this is my place. Be respectful or get out. I had wanted you to transfer out of that school. Yes, you did, yes, you did. <laughs> but I never have and I don't believe I will.
Mm. Most people out there would want to leave, like my coworker, but I still have to perform my duties to 100% because that's what is needed in that building. After I got pushed against the wall, I definitely started to look over my shoulders. And it made me feel very uneasy. I get that I was upset that night, and maybe it aggravated something in that building. He's very nervous and scared to go to work sometimes, just not knowing if he can have another encounter. Gerald has found a way to believe he won't get hurt. I've stayed at that school for two years now. I have to um, respect the building that I am working in and perform my duties to 100% and be aware that I'm being watched. And not just by supervisors. I've come to believe that he just wants to make sure that we're doing our job.